I think it's really uh, interesting to think about uh, public uh, data and private data. Now, traditionally, if we were talking about data, we would have talked about censuses, surveys, the National Statistical Agency, and so on. Uh, data was a public domain issue. But increasingly, it's the private sector that's producing the largest amount of data and the fastest growing volume of data. Uh, and our view is that public and private data can actually work together very well. Um, we think they're very much complementary. Why? Because public data is designed to be representative of the whole society and of, to cover all the issues of social importance. Private data is narrower, it's, uh, it's guided by commercial uh, applications, but it has on its, on its side uh, you know, very uh, high resolution, um, extremely rapid delivery, instantaneous real time. So if we could combine the representativeness of public data with the agility of private data, we think that that would really um, you know, greatly um, increase our ability to address development challenges. We see uh, essentially a lot of potential operating through three different channels, right? Uh, we see that uh, data can help governments be um, better providers of public services, um, better stewards of, of public funds, uh, and better policy makers, because it's on the basis of evidence that governments can take better decisions. We also see that civil society uh, can be greatly empowered through data. Um, because data creates transparency, it enables civil society to hold governments accountable and indeed firms accountable uh, for their performance and, and, and the way that they're contributing to the, the public good. And, and finally, we see that um, data is really the new factor of production. So it's an input into uh, enterprises, into the economy. Um, and uh, it's important that uh, poor countries are actually able to jump on that bandwagon and develop their own data-driven industries that really address their own um, economic potential and their own social concerns. Uh, and so those are the three real channels through which we see a positive potential for data to contribute to, to development. Of course, there are also many risks. You know, data can be abused. It can be uh, misused by governments uh, for purposes of um, discrimination, uh, for um, manipulation of elections and so forth. Uh, it can be misused by individuals uh, through criminal activity. Cybercrime is, is a huge and growing economic threat. Um, but it can also be misused by firms. Um, a lot of concern about um, you know, intrusive marketing, behavioral manipulation, uh, but also perfect price discrimination to really extract profits from consumers uh, and even algorithmic collusion so that firms can coordinate their market activities uh, without really being detected. Um, so it's really a two-edged sword, uh, data uh, with huge potential for public good but also posing increasingly uh, you know, severe risks as well. Um, in order for data to really deliver uh, on its promise uh, to development without you know, uh, these risks materializing, um, it's important to have an environment of trust. Um, and that means safeguards, uh, safeguards that respect individual rights uh, on data protection, obligations on users to respect those rights. Um, without that trust, people will uh, not be willing to hand over their data and the economic value will not, will not be realized. Um, at the same time, we need enablers because a lot of data is, is only used once and for one purpose, but actually it has an inexhaustible ability to be reused for multiple purposes. So we could create more and more value out of the same data if only we can allow that data to flow uh, around the system in a way that suitably respects uh, the rights of individuals. Uh, so we think that that's a critical area of balance. There's a lot more questions uh, than answers in this, in this field. Uh, I think that's true even in the developed world, in the OECD countries. Um, I think it's even more true uh, when we turn to developing countries where the challenges are different and, and more severe, uh, and perhaps there's been less opportunity to think about what it means. That's why um, in the World Development Report 2021, that's coming out a year from now, um, we hope to um, address some of these questions. I don't think we're going to have all of the answers, but what we would like to do is to participate with many other stakeholders to develop a way of thinking, give uh, countries a framework for thinking about the, the issues so that they can reach their own conclusions about what's going to support the development process.